Hello everyone. In this lecture, we, we can see grading of cables, capacitance of three core cable and the car current carrying capacity of the cable. First is grading of cable. In the last class, we have seen that the, for a cable, the potential stress is maximum near the conductor and minimum near the sheath. So there is a variation in potential difference across the insulation of the cable. So yeah, by, by unequal distribution of the cable, there are two uh, disadvantages. Firstly, insulation of greater thickness is required, which increases the cable size. And also it may lead to breakdown of insulation. So we are doing grading of cables. The grading of cable is the process of achieving uniform electrostatic stress in a dielectric cable is called grading of cable. So this can be achieved by distributing the stress in such a way that its value is increased from outer layer of the dielectric. There are two methods of grading the cable. They are capacitance grading and inner sheath grading. So first is capacitance grading, the process of achieving uniformity in the dielectric stress by using layers of different dielectrics is known as capacitance grading. Here there will be number of layers of dielectrics with different values of permittivity are used. In capacitance grading, homogeneous dielectric is replaced by composite dielectric. Composite dielectric consists of various layers of different dielectrics in decreasing value of permittivity. There are three dielectrics of diameter D1, D2, D3 and capital D, D1, D2 and capital D with relative permittivity E1, E2 and D3 respectively in the figure. Here the conductor and three dielectrics are there. Then the maximum stress the dielectrics are worked at same maximum stress. We are grading the capacitance such that maximum stress will be same. So the stress is inversely proportional that is Q by 2 by epsilon 0 ER into D. So it inversely proportional to E1 into D. If the stress are equal 1 by E1 D equal to 1 by E2 D D1 equal to 1 by E3 D2. Or we can say that E1 D equal to E2 D2 d1 equal to e3 d2 so this is the dielectric structure potential difference across inner layer that is the potential across this layer is v1 equal to g is the gradient g dx from d by 2 to d1 by 2 this distance is d1 by 2 or this is d1 by 2 so d by 2 to d1 by 2 g dx that is q by 2 pi epsilon 0 e1 x dx. 1 by x, while we are integrating, we will get it as log d1 by d. So, this v1 equal to g max by 2 d log d1 by d. Similarly, we can find the potential v2 and v3 across three layers. v1 equal to g max by 2 d1 log d2 by d1. And V3 equal to G max by 2 D2 log D by D2. So the total potential difference between core, core and earth sheet is V1 plus V2 plus V3. That is the sum of V1, V2 and V3. In the cable, if it is having homogeneous dielectric, then the equation will become G max by 2 D log D by D. So we can say that V is always greater than V dash. So we can say that in a graded cable, it can work at higher potential than non-graded cable. So a graded cable can work at a higher or greater potential than non-graded cable. Or for the same potential, for the same safe potential, size of the graded cable will be less than the non-graded cable. That is the advantage of graded cable. So we have inner sheath grading. In this method of cable grading, a homogeneous dielectric is used, but it is divided into various layers 
by placing metallic inner sheath between the core and the sheath. Inner sheaths are held at suitable potential, which are in the in between the core potential and earth potential. So, homogeneous dielectric material is used, but there are inner sheath provided in between. They are at same potential. This arrangement improves the voltage distribution in the dielectric of the cable and makes the potential uniform. So here also we can consider a cable with diameter D, outer sheath diameter capital D. Suppose two inner sheaths of diameter D1, D2 are inserted into the homogeneous dielectric. V1, V2, V3 are the voltage difference between the sheaths. So we can see the figure D by 2, D1 by 2, D2 by 2 and capital D by 2. There are three layers of homogeneous material. As there is definite potential, here uh, inner sheets are placed such that there is definite potential at the sheet. As there is definite potential difference between inner and outer layers of each sheet, each sheet can be treated like a homogeneous single core cable. So maximum stress between core and inner sheet 1 is G1 maximum equal to V1 by D by 2 log D1 by D as derived in the equation. G2 max equal to V2 by D1 by 2 log D2 by D1. Similarly, G3 max is V3 by D2 by 2 log D capital D by D2. Since the dielectric is homogeneous, maximum stress in each layer is same. So G1 max equal to G2 max equal to G3 max. Or these three terms can be equated. As the cable behaves like three capacitors in series, all the potentials are in phase. That is voltage between the conductor and earth lead sheet is V equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. This is inner sheet grading. Next is, next we can see the capacitance of a three core cable. Consider a three core cable. Capacitance of cable system is um, very important. Conductors are nearer to each other and uh, because it is important because conductors are nearer to each other and to the earth sheet and they are separated by dielectric of permittivity much greater than that of the air. Since the potential difference exists between the pair of conductors and between each conductor and the sheath, electrostatic static fields are set up in the cable. This electrostatic field gives rise to core to core capacitance and conductor earth capacitance. So there is capacitance between core and core, between two cores and also between the core and the earth or the cable, insulating cable insulation of the cable. The 3 cc are delta connected whereas 3 ce are star connected. Here we can see between the cables it is delta connected and from the cable to earth it is star connected. So the equivalent circuit will be like this. So we can convert this delta connected into star connected. So equivalent capacitance will be 3 cc when we are converting from delta to star. So, system capacitance equivalent value will be C equivalent and CE. So, total is CE plus 3CC is the equivalent value of capacitance in star connection. So, CN is CE plus C equivalent, CE plus 3CC. This is the capacitance. If V phase is the phase voltage and IC is the charging current, then IC is V by capacitance per phase. Capacitive reactance per phase, that is 2 pi FC. So, IC is V phase by 1 by 2 pi FC, that is 2 pi F V phase into CN. CN is CE plus 3 CC. This is the charging current. Now, we can measure this value of CE and CC. In the first measurement, three cores are bunched together and capacitance is measured between the core and the sheath. And we can find out the value of CC. In the, the bunching eliminates all three capacitors CC, leaving three capacitors CE in parallel. So C1 is the first measurement, C1 equal to 3 C earth capacitance, capacitance between the core and the sheath. So 
for each c will be c1 by 3 in the second measurement two cores are bunched with sheath and capacitance is measured between the conductors so 2cc plus cc so c2 equal to 2cc plus c we have already found out the value of c so we can find the value of cc also by getting the value of c2 now we have current carrying capacity of underground cables the safe current carrying capacity of underground cable is determined by maximum permissible temperature rise temperature rise is mainly depends on the losses in the cable that is copper losses hysteresis losses and eddy current losses safe working conductor temperature is 65 degrees celsius for armored, armored cable and 50 degrees celsius for lead sheathed cable the maximum steady state temperature condition prevails when the heat generated in the cable is equal to heat dissipated heat dissipation in the conductor is by losses and that may be total losses including the lie electric losses so permissible current loading can be find out as total power dissipated equal to temperature rise by temperature resistance there is a term called temperature resistance total temperature resistance is the sum of thermal thermal resistance thermal resistance is the sum of thermal resistance of dielectric and the soil so power dissipated is n into i square r where n is the number of conductors then n into i square r will be equal to temperature rise by thermal resistance n i square r equal to t by s s is thermal resistance so permissible current loading per conductor is i equal to root of n root of t by n r s where t is the temperature rise n is the number of conductors r is the electrical resistance per meter and s is the thermal resistance per meter thank you